what exercises did the Spirit of God tell the Apostle Paul were to be attended to that he wrote down? Well, how about the exercise of truth? Do you know how to expose evil doctrines and teachers? That's a spiritual discipline. And verse 11 says, all of us are commanded and are to be taught how to do that. Do you know where to go in the Bible when one of those cult, false teachers, demon-influenced people comes to your door or talks to you at work or addresses you in school? Do you know the truth well enough to defend it. That is a spiritual discipline. It isn't that you call in, you know, you know whoever, the, the greatest apologist, and have them talk. We're supposed to know how to defend the truth. Not the elder, not the pastor alone, the individual. See, that's what's happened in the 21st century church. Yeah, I just did a, a funeral a few weeks ago, and what was interesting was, and, and I'll just share with you what was said, um, it was Joe Smith His son Michael went off to seminary at Dallas Seminary. When Michael came back with his graduate degree, he sat down with his father. And what Michael said is, his father, who barely finished high school, knew the Bible equally and theology as well as Michael, who had just graduated from Dallas Seminary, except for Greek and Hebrew, which Joe had never had time because he worked it up, John, to learn. He probably could have. What does that tell you? Something has changed in our generation. It used to be that people that just barely made it out of high school mastered the truth of the Bible because they didn't have anything else to do. They didn't know 127 channels. They didn't know the internet to surf around. They didn't know that they could spend all their time playing games. They just wanted to know the truth and master the truth and defend the truth. That's a discipline. Secondly, the exercise of devotion, nourishing your own soul spiritually, not relying on someone else to feed you. I mean, devotionals are great. I write them. I love them. But they have to flow from a nourished heart that we have to nourish ourselves, and, and actually know how to eat and chew up and digest and apply the Scriptures. And here's another discipline or exercise, time investment. Look at what verse 7 says. It says we're supposed to reject Anything that's profane and empty. That's what an old wives' tale was. It was empty. It was just vacuous. It it might not be sinful. It just was worthless. It was a time robber. Do you know how the, the generation ago that mastered the Bible did it? They neglected other things. They didn't do profane things. Do you know what so much of sitcom America is about? Profane things. Mocking empty, uh, making fun of sin. In fact, I cringe every time I see a, a good church that is doing something like doing a special on a sitcom. I mean, I read about one church. Their, their church services were what God says from the office, a, a sitcom, a profane sitcom. And they're teaching God in that medium. Why don't they just open the Bible? Because people wouldn't listen to it. Because we've gotten so amused. If we're not amused in church, we don't like it. Well, it doesn't, by the way, the exercise of integrity. Look at verse 7, the second part. He says, you need to, Timothy, you're not just preaching. You are personally to exercise yourself. And it's not just Timothy. Every one of us, if someone comes up to you and that's part of the church, we're supposed to be able to go up to each other and say, how are you doing on your workouts? Now, I know some people in this church that if I ask you how you're doing the workout, you say, oh, I'm doing, you know, 52 hundreds and, uh, you know, 84 fifties. You know, I mean, you know what you're working on in your workouts and how far you're running. But if you ask spiritually, they look at you and go, huh? What do you mean? What are you talking about? Because we don't think in terms of working out and, and disciplining ourselves for personal godliness. Here's another one. The exercise of discipleship. Verse 11 says, not just Timothy, all of us are commanding and teaching others. Do you know what that means? Every believer is called to go into all the world and make disciples. Either you are or you're not. And if you're making a disciple, you know who it is because it's an individual you sit face to face with and you, across the word of God, are modeling and training them in righteousness. And that's almost non-existent in the 21st century church. Why? We don't have time. 
because we spend all our time in profane and empty things. Or we, we spend it mastering everything but God. But God says, these are the spiritual exercises I want you to focus on. And verse 12, living an exemplary life. Exercise yourself in Bible study. Attend to your personal mastery of God's word. Reading through it. In fact, Bonnie and I, every year we get Christmas cards like you do. And one of the things we enjoy is seeing people over the decades that we've ministered and hearing from them. We just got one. Dear friend of ours, she said, you probably know Charles, went to be with the Lord. And I thought, yeah, I heard about that. But the next line of her card was the best. She said, Charles and I marked our 14th year of reading through God's word together before the Lord called him home. And we got ready for his home going in the word. Well, boy, that related to us because I remember specifically the Sunday that this woman, who, by the way, worked for Billy Graham and is a internationally known writer, where she came to me and said, you know what, I've written, I've done all this, but I've never read the whole Bible in my whole life. And she said, I would like to tell you, just just to affirm it, she said, I'm making it my goal to read through the Bible this year. And her husband was standing right there next to her, and he, he owned 250 rental homes in Tulsa. And I thought, busy boy there with all your homes. And he stepped up and he says, and I'm gonna read it with her. And 14 years in a row, they went through the Bible. And he had cancer for 14 years. And they got ready to graduate Charles to heaven. Are you exercising yourself in Bible study? Do you attend to personally master God's word? Or do you want someone else to do that? And you'll master, you know, outdoor living. You know, great. Bring your kayak to the throne of God and see what he says about it. He'll say, that was great. You saw a lot of nature. How'd you do mastering my word? And you go, I didn't. See, that's what these exercises are about. Exercise your ministry. Do what God called you to do. Submit ourselves to Christ. We're supposed to seek first the kingdom of God, Christ ruling in my life. I want to devote myself to that. And finally, exercise the personal discipline of not ever stopping examining my lifestyle to see if did you know all these disciplines can be abused there are some people that are so heavenly minded they're of no earthly use they're kind of like the the mary and martha syndrome and we have to realize that but you know what just because some people abuse the disciplines doesn't mean that god doesn't say to us exercise yourself for the purpose of godliness